Now before we start, you need to do something. You need to like this video. Okay? Like the bloody video, alright mate? I really need it, so appreciate it. YouTube, what's going on? Thanks so much for tuning in. My name's Steven. Today we're talking about colleges versus universities. Um, what is the right fit? Where should I go? What are the best places? Um, let's just get into it. Last video, we talked about the different types of majors, different types of career paths that we um, could do as musicians and potentially um, maybe supplement in music or you know music hobbies and things like that. But now we're going to talk about conservatories versus universities. So starting out with conservatory, uh, you are on the fast track to become a pro. Is not for the faint of heart. You are there for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to get as good as you can and get into a, a job as fast as you can. You're trying to be able to sustain yourself at the end of the day, and a conservatory is the fast track, the right path to be going as fast as you can to that place where you want to go. Um, the competition is usually large. You know, you're dealing with a class size, maybe six or eight hundred people. And um, they're all there for the same reasons. They want to be in the orchestral scene. They want to be in the freelance scene. They want to do music as a career. And um, you're in the same boat. So that's kind of a double-edged sword because it's really good to have that empowering, motivational, and inspiring people around you. But it's all very competitive. You you have the time and energy to really put in practice. You know, you will you'll have the you will have the ability to practice and really chomp down at those 10,000 hours, you know, really trying to become a master at your craft. So um, at a conservatory, you aren't going to have, uh, you aren't going to have general ed classes. So you might have like a social studies or something like that, but you're not going to have math and science. Um, you're going to have electives that you have to take through the conservatory, but the majority of your classes are going to be music focused, music theory, music pedagogy, uh, piano, music history, things surrounding that, okay? They understand that your main goal there is to practice. So you're going to have more free time in your day-to-day -to, -day to actually just go and put some hours in on your instrument, which is what everybody wants at the end of the day, right? The other benefit to going to a conservatory is that you're working with professionals, most likely. These, uh, these conservatories, they have high-end you know, top tier orchestral musicians, some of the best in the world, and they are there investing in you, wanting to see you go into the career path that they're doing. You can't supplement being there and witnessing somebody who's actually doing it, and um, you know, they they have they have their own job that they're in the professional world doing exactly what you want to be doing or something very close to that is very hard to emulate that in other ways so you have a direct connection into this network which is really really cool some issues with conservatories is that it's a small campus you're dealing with you know like i said six to seven hundred people in your class and that leads to maybe you know not like you're going to see the same people every single day um, you're going to be working with the same people in the same orchestras and, and things like that. It's a very small population at the end of the day. And really, you don't have too many options. If you go into a conservatory, you are there for one degree. And if you decide to switch, you might be out of luck. Like, say you, you find that you don't want to be doing music as a major anymore you kind of have to give up those credits. Those credits will still be there, but most col yeah, most colleges won't accept those credits, and you'll have to start back at square one. So if you're choosing to go to a conservatory, it's because you know that this is a for sure thing. You know um, that you were that you were dead set on becoming a professional musician. When I chose to go to a conservatory. Um, I actually had thoughts of wanting to go to University of Georgia, where my hometown is. Um, I wanted to go back into a university. I was kind of tired of the small campus and the small population, and I was thinking I wanted a more diverse experience for, for college. Um, that didn't last too long. It subsided in a couple of months, but I really felt that maybe the conservatory was not the right decision um, and once I kind of fixed through some of those problems and kind of lowered my expectations in that sense, I, I actually began to enjoy it more and it became more of what I wanted to be doing.
Okay, so universities or colleges, they have a much more well-rounded experience. The population is huge, and you're going to be able to interact with a, a diverse group of people. You're going to have football games. You're going to have other activities, you know, basketball, um, a sorority, a fraternity, anything like that. You're going to have that diverse experience that you might be looking for in a big campus at a big school with a lot of people, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 people there. Um a great part about this is that you have the opportunity to switch majors to say, you know, music major isn't really what you want to be doing and maybe a minor is better and you want to pick up maybe going into business or maybe um, in engineering or science, biology, anything like that. You have the freedom because you're at that school that offers those classes for you. So that's a huge, um, a huge benefit to going to, going to universities is that you have that option if you're not 100% sure if you want to do music as a career. And then your studio. Your studio is going to have different priorities. You know, if you go to some place like Indiana University, when, when I was applying there, there was 38 trombone players uh, there at the same time. Now, the the leveling degree of which um, people cared about music as a as a major or as a career that also varies you know 38 out of 30 people you might have you know five that want to have orchestral jobs the others maybe just want to do marching band some of them are doing it as minors and maybe some do it as majors but they're not necessarily uh like they're about to switch anyway the studio has different priorities and so or you're going to be the odd person out because you're the one that's wanting to practice more and more you're the one that's wanting to put as much into this as you can and people like it might not be the norm at a university to be putting that in whereas a conservatory that's kind of ec the expectation you're going to have other priorities you're going to have more classes you're going to have um gen ed classes you're going to have extracurricular activities that um may or may not take away from everything you want to be doing on your instrument so that's something to look out for and then there is a low level of priority placed on you as an undergraduate as a freshman you might be getting taught by a graduate student you you might not even get actual like maybe one or two lessons out of a semester with the actual teacher that accepted you to the school i find that to be a disservice for a lot of students i understand that as a teacher you can't you know you can't teach 30 to 40 students in one week, um, so you're going to have to delegate a lot of that stuff. But it really puts um, it puts a burden on the student to really figure out more for themselves about what they need to be doing, which is not a huge issue at the end of the day. But if you want that attention, you want that priority to be placed on you, maybe colleges isn't necessarily the place to be. Um, and then we're just going to talk about the cost of schools. So I have here... Um, I have here a list of colleges and like how much they cost and, and the expenses that go along with it. Um, my master's that I, where I went for my master's, the Juilliard school, they have their undergraduate tuition right here. Um, everything listed. And if you're a New York resident at the Juilliard school, you're looking at $65,000 per year. Now there are uh, scholarships and things like that that can come along the way but let's just for um for our sake let's just say that we're at our base level we don't have any scholarship to work with we can talk about that in another video but let's just work with what the brass tax of it is okay juilliard something comparable like msm manis school of music something like that they're going to be in the ballpark of 60 to seventy thousand dollars maybe a little less but most likely a little bit more um you know, in-state tuition, $45,000. Room and board, $17,000. On campus, other budgets, $2,000. I mean, it gets really expensive in New York, right? Um, let's go on to here. University of Miami. We're in Florida, right? That's, you know, um, that's great. It's a great school with a great music program. It's also a university. It's kind of, I would say University of Miami is kind of a niche because it has a really great university with a really nice music program, so... Um, but let's see, University of Miami, $68,000 a year without tax or without scholarship. So we're looking at in-state tuition of 48,000. And this is if you're a resident in Florida, it's the same price. Um, room and board, 14,000. You know, you guys can see this books and supplies, a thousand on campus and other budget, 3000. So you're looking at 
68, maybe $70,000 a year for four years without any scholarship. That can add up a lot, right? Um, so this is Indiana University Bloomington. Um, this is one of the cheaper, uh, this is one of the cheaper colleges with, uh, like I said, you know, there's a, a large music school there. It's also very reputable, but within a university, if you're an Indiana resident there, it's 24,000 for the year. That's actually really good. I, I was actually pretty surprised by that one. Um, but your non-resident, it's 50,000. So it's almost double if you don't live in the state. So that's something to look after for. I think scholarship can supplement a lot of that stuff. But just know that these places, you know, you're looking, if you don't live in Indiana, you know, you might be out of luck for some of the stuff. Um, San Francisco, San Francisco Conservatory, you know, we're getting on that West Coast. Um, so look at this, $66,000 for in the, like a resident in California, still 66,000. If you're living with your parents in California, you're looking at 50,000. So, you know, you're looking about 15, 16,000 for off campus housing and things like that. Um, so, uh, let's see. Now, for non-resident total budget, you're looking, you're still looking at like sixty-seven thousand dollars, which that is just—it's a huge burden. That's a that's a comparable salary for some, like for an individual, you know. Um, it's it's imperative that you get that scholarship, and um, you you figure out ways to get some grants and get some money behind you so that you can you know lower these costs as much as possible we'll be talking about scholarships in another video down the line last place i want to show you guys northwestern university you're looking at um like another university with a good you're looking at another university with a diverse group of people you know it's a huge school and it has a very reputable program uh, for music and you know you're looking at seventy four thousand dollars if you're a resident or non-resident it doesn't matter at that point you're spending almost seventy five thousand dollars which is just an outrageous amount you know a lot of the burden that a lot of music students actually have is once they're done with their four five six years of school they actually have to pay off a fair amount of student debt which becomes burdensome you know because um, it's hard to find a job in the first place. Once you find a job, you're basically paying off a lot of your student debts. Um, and it it's a challenge. So you need to know these risks. You need to know what is going on when or you know when you're applying to these places. Also, you're gonna have to um, you know applying for these places, conservatories, they actually have a pretty steep fee for a lot of applications to submit for pre-screenings and things like that because the faculty, they need to listen to all these recordings and they need to get compensated for that time. So um, you need to be aware that there is certainly a financial commitment in just applying to these places. So making sure that we really know what we want to do, really make sure that we're on the right path of what we want to do, where's the right place to go is really, really important here. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Really appreciate all the love and support you guys have been giving me. Make sure to check out the website. I have the schedule of uh, you know what I'm doing, live streams, videos that are coming out, things like that, all there. Um, would love to get in contact with you guys. Either way, remember, stick with it. Stay with the process. I'll catch you guys later.